Hallelujah. Did I hear winner? I'm, I'm sorry, but the devil is supposed to be under our feet. And if he's talking to you eye to eye, I remember Bishop Wilson saying, he's too high. Oh, okay. All righty. Father, we thank you for this offering. Hallelujah. We thank you for your people who have brought an offering to your house. We ask that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we thank you for your continued support. The next voice you will hear would be that of our Bishop Bendolph. Receive ye him. Praise the Lord again. Can we say praise the Lord? Come on, everybody, clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad to be here today. And I thank the Lord for what he has done. And I thank the Lord for what he's going to do. And I think that everybody ought to be happy. But I've learned that you can't make everybody happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. I choose to be happy. I know that the devil is a liar. And the discernment of what the devil is trying to do is obvious. Praise the Lord. But I thank God that I've been called to this office. And I thank God that I pray and I talk to the Lord. And I thank him for Holy Ghost power even now. You see, the devil works in a whole lot of ways. Amen. It ain't always in your body. It ain't always. This means or that means he, he works in a lot of ways. And you got to be able to know the devil. Amen. When the devil begins to work. Praise the Lord. And so I'm just so happy today. I'm here with a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm here with a word. You can receive the word if you want to. You don't have to. Amen. That's up to you. And, and, and that's the problem. Amen. In not only this church, but every church. Amen. The word of the Lord is being preached. And if you don't receive the word of the Lord, or if it don't go the way that you want it to go, that's on you. Amen. But the word of the Lord shall be preached. Amen. In this place today, somebody said amen. Now, you can receive the Holy Ghost if you don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can be delivered if you want to be delivered. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil is a liar. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. He's a liar. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't have to run around in this church on a bicycle on the walls. Amen. But I know who Jesus is. 
Amen. Amen. And I know that I talked to him this morning and on last night. Amen. And I'm already prepared. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I came already prepared. Lift up your hands and give God some praise. Amen. The Lord will, he said to me, nothing upon you unaware. He said, before it springs forth, he said, I'll show you. And I'm thankful that he's true to his word. Let us go to the word of the Lord today. I don't know what, what note or what tune that I'm going to start this off in, but it says, I love you. I love you, Lord. Love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Yes. Somebody help me. It says, my heart, my soul belongs to you. Pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart. The Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke beginning with verse number 16. The Gospel of Luke. Beginning with verse number 16. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, beginning with verse number 16. We in the red today, Brother Roscoe. It's good to see, <clears throat> and forgive me, brother, I apologize to you openly. It's good to see uh, Elder Carlton Cave here today. I've been meaning to call him and to check on him, but I'm glad to see him here today. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Brother Terry, Minister Terry Lewis. It's been a while since we've seen Minister Terry. He's been working Sundays. Amen. We thank the Lord for him being here. For all of you that are here, Andrew, it's good to see you, son. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, beginning with verse number 16, and then when you have that, we're going to ask you to go to the Gospel of Matthew, verses 7 
and 11. Chapter 22. Luke chapter number 14, beginning with verse 16. And then Matthew 22, beginning with verse 11 through verse 14. All right. The Gospel of Luke chapter 14, beginning with verse 16, says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Matthew chapter number 22, beginning with verse number 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, few are chosen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for life this morning. We thank you for your many wonderful blessings from last week to this week. And now we pray that you would just help us and take us to a higher height on today. Remember the sick, those that are not here that would desire to be here, touch their bodies and raise them up. Lord God, we thank you for your anointing. Now anoint the ears of the hearers. Call someone to be healed, delivered, set free or saved. Whatever thy will be, let it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And as you begin to take your seat, turn to your neighbor and look at them and say to them, neighbor, you knew better. Look at another neighbor, that's the wrong one, and say to them, neighbor, you knew better. Put your hands together and give God some praise. We're glad to be here. There was a young man that we worked with who passed away on yesterday. Worked with him side by side with him for eight years. And we got news that he had had a stroke and that he was brain dead and they took him off the ventilator, 51 years of age. And so it's kind of been on my mind the past couple of days thinking about Brother James. And so we ask that you pray for us. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
Only he who letteth will let until the wicked one be revealed. There are many troublesome things that are going on in our world today. And Jesus is soon to come. As in the days of Noah, when Noah, the righteous man, began to tell the people that it's going to rain. It's going to rain. He had never seen rain, but it was by faith that the Lord spoke to him and said, it's going to rain and he's going to destroy this earth by water. I'm here today to tell you, like many preachers throughout the world this morning will be proclaiming that Jesus is soon to come. And it's not going to be as long as what you may think that it is. So we must prepare ourselves. The preppers are preparing themselves for Armageddon. They have underground places where they have food to last them for up to five years. Different things like that. They're prepared for all-out war and some type of catastrophe that is going to happen soon, at least they think within their minds, but they are prepared, they are preparing. And how much more should the saints of God be preparing for the soon return of our Lord? If you don't mind this uh, afternoon that we go straight to our text, because we see that Jesus is at a rich man's house. He is talking to a Pharisee. He is telling this Pharisee that he ought to look out for the poor. He is telling him that it's one thing to help somebody who's able to help you back. But your blessing is to help someone who is not always going to be able to help you back. That is a lesson that we should be able to govern ourselves by. And the child of God must understand that they are in the help business. In this world, there are givers and there are takers. And I don't know about you, but I would rather be a giver than a taker. The scripture says it is better to give than it is to receive. In all of this and in all that I say, I hope that I prepare you for the return of Jesus. Because you don't want to be lost when he comes. You want to go with him when he returns. Jesus talking to the rich, he is saying to them, if you go to a wedding, and when you get to the wedding and you sit in the high place, amen, it would be quite embarrassing for someone who comes in who has more stature than you and you be removed from the high place. So it's better off to start in the low place, amen, and allow them when the person comes in who's over the wedding to lift you up and say, come up hither. And it's another lesson that, amen, the Lord will exalt you in due season. You don't have to rush the Lord. God has a timing for you. And there's nothing that you can do, amen, to press him there's nothing that you can do to hurry him. God has a time for you. He has a time for your healing, a time for your deliverance, a time for your exaltation, and a, a time for whatever it is. For the scripture says there is a time and a season for everything under the heavens. 
So we must learn to wait upon the Lord and be of a good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, as Jesus began to talk to these people in this house and tell them about helping, amen, those that are in need, amen, he then begins to talk to them concerning a wedding feast. And that is in our text today. He said, a certain man, he made a great supper and he invited many to come. Now you have to understand that we went over into Matthew chapter number 22 because they are the same particular parable. However, Matthew writes differently than what Luke writes. It's like two people seeing an accident. They will have different versions of what actually happened, but yet and still see the same thing. And, and, and as long as the version was, I don't care who turned the corner, amen, that person at the end of it ran into them. You may say it different what it was the blue car's fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Matthew and Luke are saying the same thing for out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. There are things that Matthew writes that Luke leaves out and things writes that Matthew leaves out. We start with Luke today because... He says that this man made a great supper and invited a lot of people. He invited a lot of people because he was wealthy. And the people that he invited, remember that Jesus was talking to a rich Pharisee in his house. The people that he was inviting were such as the people that the rich Pharisee would invite. He were inviting, amen, per se, his uh, equal in financial status. In other words, you had to be a member of the Million Dollar Club in order to have been invited. And he had left the middle class out and he had left out the lower class. He was only inviting them that Jesus had spoke earlier in the chapter about of the same people who would invite him, amen, if they were having a function. We also can go a little further and bring it over into the church. How the church members are those who have been invited. We have been invited to come to this great wedding feast. We have what it takes. The scripture says in Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, they're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, there always you have people who are always learning. But because of their own practices, their own hang-ups, amen, their own issues and their desires to please their own flesh, they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, they have some truth, but they don't have or they lack real knowledge of the truth. For you shall know the truth, and when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. There's a certain way that you will carry yourself when you have come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. There are places that you used to go that you won't go anymore when you come to the knowledge of the truth. 
lies. It's not just truth. Truth will keep you from going some places. Truth will keep you from doing some things. But the knowledge of the truth is another level. Amen. You'll watch what you say if you have the knowledge of the truth. Amen. You'll be careful of your words. You'll be careful about your actions when you have the knowledge of the truth. And so he says the church folk, they're ever learning, but they don't have real knowledge of the truth. You, you can sit back and you can watch some people and it doesn't take long. I wish I had half of a church in here. And it doesn't take long for you to be able to know who has knowledge of the truth. Oh yeah, they got some truth, but they don't have real knowledge. Paul had to write to Timothy and tell Timothy, the young man, be careful of these people. Because in verse number one, he let them to know that in the last days, perilous times are going to come. And these are some of the things that you're going to have to endure in the last days. So the rich man, Jesus is giving him the parable and said that a certain man, he made a great supper and he invited many people of his own status to come. He sent his servant out at supper time to say to them that had their invitation, come for all things are now ready. I would like to bring it over into the church a little more. Amen. Amen. We are, we have been invited. We have our invitations. Amen. We ought to be glad. Amen. Should have been glad this morning. When they said unto us, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, you have been invited. You have your invitation. You have truth. You know who the man is that is inviting everybody else to come. And so you have to understand, church, amen, that we have, like Israel, we have a jump start on knowing who Jesus is. If you know who Jesus is today, you are 25 steps ahead of someone who does not yet know who he is. But you got to be careful. Amen. Just because you know him, uh, do you know him in the power of his might? Do you, do you know him in a way that you're willing to forsake all? Because Jesus says, unless you forsake mother, father, sister, brother, husband, and wife, and follow me, you cannot have no part with me. In other words, it is a sacrifice when you walk with the Lord. Amen. It's a sacrifice to giving up that which is desirable to your flesh. Amen. Jesus says, then you can pick up your cross and follow me. And he says he sent him out for him to tell these people who had been invited. He was sent out. The tie is time for the wedding now. Come. I know I sent you out the invitation, but it's now ready. In the Jewish uh, custom, the wedding, amen, the father was the only one who knew the exact date of the wedding. The son didn't know, and neither did the bride. And when the father said, and when he had helped his son and prepared his house, and it was now ready for his son and his daughter-in-law, he then began to call the musicians. He then began to call his son and say, now it is time to go and get your bride. And it is now time. No one knew, but they had their invitation. 
He said, now it is time for you to come because all things are now ready. And they all who should have been there with one consent begin to make excuse. Now we're in a time, we're in a day and time, amen. The last days are here, they're upon us. All you have to do is watch the news. Many things are happening. They're talking about the pestilences, pestilences one right after another. They're talking about polio now. Uh, the, the monkey pox, amen, you got COVID and many things are happening, wars, and there are rumors of wars, famines that are going on all over the place, and there are other countries talking about holding back their food supply. We are living in the last of the last days, and they begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, and, and we're living in that day and time where uh, men and women uh, are, are making a whole lot of excuses in the church. Uh, they're, they're, they're making excuses, uh, but it is nobody's fault but their own fault. Amen. They're making excuses as to why they don't want to come, number one, to the house of the Lord. Amen. But the Bible says, forsake not your assembling of yourselves together in the men of some already is. In other words, it's dangerous. It is very dangerous. Amen. And we thank God for our offering and for those, and we were looking at the reports today, those who support us through Givelify and Cash App, we thank God for you. But it is a dangerous thing to stay out of the house of the Lord. Amen. The enemy is using COVID to keep people from the house of the Lord. And they all begin to make excuses. And I want you to know, don't get into a habit of making excuses as to why you can't come to the house of the Lord. Because, amen, you can make the excuse to me, but God knows your heart. You can text me all you want, or you can call, or you can tell First Lady on Facebook, amen, uh, tell him I'm not going to be there. All these reasons, praise the Lord, but God knows the reason, the real reason why you're not at church. And they begin to make excuse. And this man, amen, this king, amen, who was looking out for the best interest of his son is saying, come to my wedding. Everything is ready. And then they begin to make excuses. Uh, don't allow anybody to make an excuse as to why they can't worship as to the reason they can't worship God or that they can't praise the Lord. The devil is a liar. I don't need to be around nobody to praise the Lord. Amen. As a matter of fact, I've heard people praise the Lord on a bar stool, drunk with Jim Bean in their system. The scripture says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I praise him at home. I praise him on my job. Everywhere I go, I can praise the Lord. I don't need you to pump me up. And I don't need you to prime and to pull on me so that I can praise the Lord. God's been good to me, and therefore I will bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. They make excuses. Amen. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. That ain't nothing but an excuse because who buys a piece of ground without first of all seeing the ground? I'm not going to buy any ground off of you. You tell me you got 10 acres for sale and they're fertile and then when I get there, there's nothing but hills and peaks and valleys. No, I'm going to see it before I buy it. Can you say amen? And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go prove them. You should have proved once again the oxen before you bought them. 
because you thought the oxen that you were buying were weighing at least around a ton and a half. And when you got there, the oxen can only weigh 400 pounds. You done already bought the oxen, and now you got some lame oxen. Praise the Lord. So you should have checked it out first. Can somebody say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to check it out first. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. There were many excuses that they were making as to why that they could not come to this wedding. So the servant came and he told the Lord these things of what was going on and the master of the house being angry, said to his servant, and this is the part I like because this is the part I believe from whence I came from. Uh, go into the streets. Go into the lanes of the city. Amen. Go into the alleys. Amen. Go, amen, around the crack houses. He didn't tell you to go into the crack house. Go and hang out and you know, you're going to see him coming from every walk of life. And I believe that's what the Lord is going to do. It's going to surprise some of us who the Lord is going to bring into this place in the last days. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I can't wait. Look at somebody and say, I can't wait. Bring them here. Bring in the poor because the rich didn't want to come. Bring in the poor because the rich said that they have need of nothing. So go and bring in the poor, bring in the maimed, bring in the halt and the blind. Bring them in and the servant went out and he went and looked for the blind who was a beggar because he couldn't help himself and he went to the halt to those who couldn't walk and get around that well he went to the poor and to the main and he went to gather them he said there is a great supper going on and they said where is the supper they said it's in that house on the top of the hill they looked up and said we're not worthy to go to the top of that hill how are we going to get there, number one? And number two, I'm blind, I'm halt, I'm mean, I can't get there. But how many of you know that God can make a way out of no way? We don't belong up there. That's out of our status, praise the Lord. But God is calling today, even in Facebook land, uh, whosoever will, let them come. And I say to the backslider today, praise the Lord, backslider, it is time for you to return back unto the Lord. And the servant said, Lord, we went and we got them. We put them on our chariots and we loaded them up and we brung them and they're here. And yet there is still room. Amen. They're ready, praise the Lord. They're not the ones that you invited. They're not the ones that most people would have thought. Amen. But these are the ones that we have went out there and brought in from the streets. And the servant said, Lord, it's done. And the Lord said unto him, go out into the highways. In other words, you just went locally. He said, but I want you to go a little bit further now. He said, I want you to go to the highways. Amen. And the hedges. Amen. Get those folk, amen, that are way far away for you and bring them in here. Go to the hedges. Go to the people that may not even speak your language and just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Somebody said when you call upon the name of Jesus, uh, amen, that demons tremble. Amen. And so he went to the highways and the hedges and they couldn't understand what he was trying to tell them, the importance and the significance of coming to this wedding. And as he began to try to tell them, they didn't understand, so he compelled them to come. He said compel them. In other words, 
words, beg them if you got to. Just so that my house may be filled. I don't want my son coming out here and it's only 50 guests when I have room for 500 guests. How many of you know that there is a number that no man can number? Of every nation, of every tongue, amen, of every race, praise the Lord, going to be up in heaven and we all going to sing a new song. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I can't wait. Amen. And another thing, we better learn how to get along down here because if we can't get along down here, you die, I'm not going to say we ain't going to get along up here. No, because you ain't going to be up there. Amen. You got to love your brother and sister in spite of what political affiliation. Amen. There may be differences, but we still have to love one another. Jesus says, go and get them and bring them into my house so that they can taste of my supper. Then we find that Matthew begins to add a little more. Amen. The supper has been now furnished and the room is now filled. Amen. And you've got to understand that when the man uh, invited these people to come to his wedding, amen, he would give them what this rich man would provide a garment for them upon entering the door. It was not just any normal garment, but it was an embroidered garment, amen, what took time to stitch out and to prepare for all the guests who were bidden. In other words, when I invited you, praise the Lord, amen, I knew your neck size, your arm length, and your length of your legs, praise the Lord. I, I had you prepared. Do you not know that the very hairs of your head are all numbered? Therefore, you don't have to fear anything. And so God, the man, had prepared everybody, a man who came and had on was a garment that was prepared for them. Matthew begins to say that when the man came in and he begins to look around, he sees that someone is there that does not have on a wedding garment. He looks at the man and says, friend, where is your wedding garment? In other words, he was not one of the poor, he was not one of the blind, but he was a friend, somebody who knew protocol, somebody who should have known better than to come into the house like that. Look at somebody now and say to the neighbor, you got to be careful how you come into this house. Uh, you ought to come, if you know better, you ought to come in here with a praise on the inside. If you know better, you ought to come in here lifted up holy hands. You shouldn't come in here looking for somebody to fault or somebody to roll their eyes at you or somebody to say something to you. You ought to come in here and be glad that they said unto you, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, if you don't know no better, that's one thing. But if you know better, you ought to, hallelujah, come in here and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name somebody shout hallelujah friend what are you doing in here you should have had on the garment you had one that was specially made for you amen then the man says take this servant and cast him out into outer darkness where there will be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. In Mark, in Luke, praise the Lord, the last couple of verses, uh, verses 35 and 34 and 35, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. He said, salt is good. Amen. He's talking to the rich Pharisee. Salt 
is good. Uh, but if the salt loses its savor, it is good for nothing. And so you've got to understand what is Jesus trying to tell this Pharisee? What is he trying to tell his listeners? What is he trying to tell us on today? Salt is good. Salt has a purpose. Salt has effectiveness. It is good for many different things. You can preserve with salt. You can add salt and get another taste. Salt has many different effectivenesses and purposes. But Jesus is saying uh, salt is good, but if it loses its effectiveness, if it loses its purpose, it is good for nothing. Uh, it is not even worth putting upon the dung hill. In other words, salt without savor is no better or even worse than somebody who used the bathroom on top of the hill because you can use dung as a fertilizer to grow something uh, but salt when it runs out of its savor it is good for nothing but to be cast out into the streets. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, salt is good unless it loses its savor. When it loses its savor, and that's why I said to the backslider, uh, amen, don't let the devil keep you out there much longer because the adversary came to kill steal and destroy it's time to return home backslider allow the lord to use you allow the lord to work on you because only what you do for christ is going to last he'll put all kind of things in front of you to get you sidetracked but all along god is pulling on you so that you can keep your savor because if the time comes amen when you lose your savor you will be good for nothing Somebody at this time, I'm getting ready to close. I ought to throw your hands up and your head back and shout hallelujah. Amen. In other words, he is saying, go everywhere and get people. Bring them in here. Because somebody that's coming, come and help me out. I'm closing. Uh, somebody is going to appreciate the goodness that I have prepared for them. Somebody is going to be glad for for where I have brought them from. Somebody's going to come in and say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. You got folk, praise the Lord, that sit in the house, praise the Lord, and amen, make excuses about this and about that and that and this. But the Lord says, I want somebody in here from the highways and from the hedges uh, and may not smell too good. Uh, the clothes may have holes in them, uh, but they'll be glad to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, they'll be glad to be in the number one more time. Uh, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor say neighbor uh, I'm glad to be here uh, and I came in here today with my wedding garment on. Uh, I didn't come in here with just any kind of garment uh, but I came here today uh, with a garment of praise. Uh, it's going to take away the, the garment of heaviness uh, and when I get in here uh, I'm going bless the Lord. I got on my garment of praise. I've gone through hell, high waters, all week long. But today is my breakthrough. Today I'm going to bless him. Today I'm going to let him know in the presence of the saints. David said, Lord, I will bless you in the presence of the saints. In other words, everybody ought to know that God has been good to me. I want everybody to know he brought me out 
of the miry clay. I want everybody to know I've been going through hell on my job, in my home. You don't know what all I've been through, but God has blessed me. Take out your cell phone. Take a selfie of yourself and then show it to your neighbor and say, neighbor, next year, I won't look like this because God has got something bigger, brighter, better for me. I'm going higher, higher, oh, higher. Somebody shout glory. Clap your hands. Clap them real good. Shout hallelujah. I don't know about nobody that's in here today, but I know where he brought me from. I could have, I should have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave. But thanks be to God who gave me victory. I will be thankful when I come here. I'm going to put on my garment of praise. And if I shout, hallelujah, and you don't like it, excuse me, I'll holler louder, louder, oh louder. Say, uh, turn to somebody. I'm closing now. Say to the neighbor, neighbor, I'm glad to be invited. Say, neighbor, I'm glad to be here. Say, neighbor, I'm glad, I'm happy, I got peace and joy that flows like a river. There is a river of life flowing out of me. Say, yeah, say, yeah. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Oh, yeah. All kinds of excuses that these people made. All kinds. But there ain't never excuse. There'll never be one to where I won't give God a praise. I may be up and I may be down. I may be level to the ground. But God will still be worthy. He's worthy. I wish I had a church. I said he's worthy to be praised. Ain't he worthy? Say yes. Say yes. Go get my people. Go to the highways, the hedges. Go to the streets. Go to the lanes. When was the last time? Don't wave your hand. But when was the last time that you invited a sinner to come to church? How often is it when you've been at Kroger and you've seen somebody at Family Dollar and you knew they didn't have Jesus, but you invited them to come to your church? Praise the Lord. But the Lord saying, go get them and bring them in here. Praise the Lord. Go get my people. Bring them in here. And you'll see. You'll see. 
a church that will progress. Saints, it's time. It's time. Once again, as I close, it's time for us to realize that Jesus is coming soon. The signs are all around us. All around us. Something seems to be breaking just about every day, every two, every three days. Major things that wouldn't happen every 20 years are happening now every two and three days. He's showing us he's getting ready to come. And we can make all the excuses that we want to, but it's praying time. It's time to get ready for Jesus. Everybody's on your feet. You can be saved today. You don't have to leave the same way that you came. That's your choice. You can be delivered. You can be healed. But you have to believe. You have to trust God. Somebody here, is, I want to know, is, is, is there a backslider today? Is there a backslider that wants to return home? Is, is there someone who doesn't know Jesus in the free pardon of their sins? Has never been baptized in water. We have water here to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there one today? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Only, only, only what you do for him is going to last. It doesn't make any difference how much you have or how much you don't have. What is really and the only thing that's going to matter for your soul is that you prepare it for Jesus. That's all that matters. You don't want to be lost.